Like the one thing I, I really want from Tekken is, is just transparency. Transparency in how the game should be played. I want the developers to like have open arms to their to their player base, to entry level players to be like, this is how you play the game. This is how you approach this character. Hey, let me give you a hand. Let me let me help you pick the right character for you. I feel like Tekken is a mean game, honestly. I feel like it goes out its way to confuse players. Actually, I think I read an interview with Harada where, hold on. It's actually not an interview, it's a series of tweets that were translated, but I feel it reveals so much. Bear in mind, this is 2014, so I'm sure Harada's loosened up his opinions expressed here, because now frame data is available in the game. If the frame data was displayed and freely available, every single player would easily have the answers to moves and situations an opponent can throw at you, basically. What I'm going to say to a lot of this is, is, is this. He's talking about frame data as regards to punishment. And yes, punishment, it's a very binary black and white thing. You do a punishable move, you get punished. But that's not where choices arise in fighting games. They come from neutral. They come from knowing all your options, being fully aware of them and being able to strategize around them. When it comes to arguing the balance of the Tekken games, I don't consider players saying certain moves are bad only because the frame data is numerical value. Because I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of, there are a lot more factors to consider like animation, range, reach. Yes, animation is important. This is an interesting part about what is seeable as a low because animation has a lot to do with it. To reassert myself, I feel like I do not want a mode where you can see entire frame data in the game. Fast forward six years, frame data is purchasable for a nominal fee. Um, anyway, <laughs> I want to talk about that animation part because I think it's an interesting thing that people often gloss over when they talk about whether a move is seeable or reactable or whatever, especially in Tekken where the game is constantly throwing moves at you. Let's do this. 200 milliseconds, right? 200 milliseconds. What is 200 milliseconds in terms of frames? Do we have any mathematicians here? 12.5. So between 12 and 13 frames. Average human reaction is 250 milliseconds. And mine um, is 200 milliseconds, yeah? 250 milliseconds is about 16 frames. So players' reactions vary from anywhere from 12 to 16 frames, obviously. No one can block 16 frame lows on reaction. For example, Kazuya's down back four comes out in 20 frames. 20 frames. If the screen flashed green every time Kazuya did down back four, you don't be blocking it on reaction, but it doesn't. Reactions in Tekken aren't just about reactions. They're about this two-step process. It's recognition, then reaction. Recognizing the move, Sorting it out in your brain. What should I do? Then the response. When you look at a move's frame data, yeah, it's not just about startup, frame advantage. It's also about range. And they have that at the bottom. Status, what, what it does. Tracking. Most Tekken players agree that a move is seeable at around 24 frames. Maybe add a frame or two online. That's being generous. You can say 23. Miguel's down back one is 25 frames. On paper, it should be seeable. But it has such an unorthodox animation, which is why so many players struggle to block them. Top players will just drill this animation into their head, so it becomes second nature to them. As soon as you see him do this, what is this? Does this, does this communicate I'm going to do a low? Of course not. But top players will drill in their head to see that when he swings his hand out like this, he's going to swing low. The initial 10 or so frames of this starting up, you wouldn't associate with a low. Miguel has a lot of moves where he kind of swings his arm back. One of my favorite types of mix-ups in fighting games are moves that look similar and you can't tell the difference. For example, Savage 1 looks really similar to Savage back 1. But Savage 1 is 0 on block, but it's a high and doesn't track. But Savage back 1 is a tracking mid now for some reason. So I was about to say he has so many moves which are just like these like bitch slaps, right? These all look pretty much exactly the same. So if you condition opponents to respect you after this, and this also has, you know, follow-ups like this, which are basically safe outside the wall, then you can start doing um, moves like back one, which are minus nine, but you might be able to keep your turn because they're like, was that, was that Savage one? 
Uh, was that Savage back one or was it? Oh fuck! Even though this doesn't have any follow-ups, minus nine. Like a similar thing you can actually do with Kunimitsu. This is really really fun. Yeah. Uh, Setsunagake two, right? Counter hit. This leads to a big anime combo, right? But it is minus nine, so you should on paper give up your turn. But while standing two, which you can also get from set two, as this follow-up after. So people might think, oh, I can take my turn because it's set two, but not. Nah. I love these visual mix-ups, right? Uh, someone meant like Alchemist, I think you mentioned with Heihachi, right? This is this is a really good one, actually. This is one of the better ones. So Heihachi's down back too. It's actually, I think, a bit of an underrated low. Yes, very unsafe. Minus 18. Even Steve can launch punish this thing, right? But what makes it really grimy is that the opening animations, Heihachi does a spinny thing, is really similar to Heihachi does a spinny thing which is back two, right? Which is now his uh, wall bounce. Used to be a count hit combo, right? It's a bit of a visual mix up. I either hate him or love him. I, I kind of love him. They're so grimy. They're so sneaky. So you condition him with this. Yeah, big beefy minus two mid. And occasionally you slip this in. This is like, oh shit. This should catch you by surprise for a big whap of damage. Yeah, you gotta listen to the hashish. And that's another good point. Audio cues, right? With, with Heihachi, it's actually really important to be listening. Audio cues are really important because with his back two, he goes, and with his down back two, hashish. So um, you wanna block the hashish. When you hear him talking about the hash, the hashish, block low. A little question What was. Um, the main difference in Lars up four three from Tekken six to Tekken tag two. There are probably some little uh, hitbox changes here or there, but the main change was in Tekken six when Lars was up four three, stoic, silent resilience. But in tag two, he starts screaming like a bitch. Yeah, yeah, and that is actually quite important. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. But it made it much easier to punish because interesting thing about humans visual stimuli is approximately reaction time 180 to 200 milliseconds detecting whereas for sound it's a whole 40 milliseconds faster we respond faster to audio than we do to um visual which is why it's really important that you have those headphones on when you play in a tournament. Not just a, it's not just to block out the crowd. It's because audio information is a big part about confirming and punishing. So yeah, this was the nerf. You turn into a bitch. And that made this easier to punish. We saw that thing with uh, that interview with Harada earlier, that he believes frame data should be something hidden, right? I honestly believe that punishment should be made as open and transparent and easy to understand as possible. Maybe that's taking a bit far. Not as easy as possible, I feel. But I do feel that punishment, like when you block a move like th this, or any really punishable move, really, it shouldn't be like, oh shit, shit, fuck, 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 what was that? It was at minus one. Like what it does for an intermediate player, it adds more grinding time. It forces you to learn a lot of punishments by muscle memory. And when we're talking about like 5,000 plus moves, at what point does this stop being enjoyable? Punishment in general should be more visually intuitive. I feel that when, the, when this move gets blocked, Lars should just flap to the floor and, and cry like a baby because he's dislocated his shoulder. It would, it would suit him as well. Like a lot of moves I feel should just be more visually intuitive on block. Not just in terms of punishment, not just for like purely practical reasons, but also because the game would look more organic and and tighter. Let's look at this. If you block this, at the moment, a lot of a lot of people don't even know that this is punishable, right? Because you try to punish it with jabs, and this is the classic uh, green rank pull. Core circle forward two to down forward two. Classic green rank, like mwah, to a T, right? What does that add to the game, really? It just adds another knowledge check. It adds another barrier on your journey to, to core Tekken, which, which is, I think, where the meat of Tekken is. Wouldn't it be better if, when you block this, Paul slumps forward, like holding his arm or something? Wouldn't it look way cooler as well? Wouldn't it sell it? Wouldn't it be more visually intuitive? Don't you feel this just looks janky? 
You know, Leffen had this really interesting idea on one of his streams. In between people hurling lettuce and tomatoes at him and other you know, assorted vegetables. But he had an interesting idea that blocking a high and blocking a mid should um, result in different block animations, clearly identifiable. And I think that's a really good idea because not only would it help communicate to the player what's going on, but it also just look cooler. The, the fights would look more organic. You know, like whenever I talk to a, like a complete casual player about Tekken, a common criticism is that it looks too robotic and stiff. My wife constantly says this game looks really like, it looks beautiful static, but when they start animating, it sometimes looks really mismatched and inorganic and just janky. Wouldn't it be cool if like Leroy dynamically blocked the jab with a more bespoke animation like Pata. But then when he blocked the mid, he was like, you know, his hands were actually at his mid section protecting his ribs or his stomach or something. Instead, he's just like doing a generic, oh, I am blocking, I am, I am blocked, this is block. I think this would make Tekken more engaging to play easier to get in and it wouldn't remove the depth like when we saw that interview with Harada he seemed to think that the depth of Tekken was in knowing what to punish when it's not depth in any fighting game comes between the decisions that players make counterplay to one another and that's not about punishment that's a very binary thing you either punish it or you don't you either punish the minus 10 move or you don't I think I went over quite a few ranty topics um is Strife still not up? 